Uh, we're here today at uh, Val. I'm here with Kieran and uh, Helen from Merck. Uh, we're really excited to see what's going to happen inside. Helen, do you want to give us a quick little overview of uh, who Val are? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Matthias. Um, so, yeah, Val um, are a startup, an emerging startup in the cultured meat um, field. So, we're really excited to be here today to meet um, co founder George Pepu. Uh, we've been supporting, so, Merck has um, been supporting Val with some of the RD and, and some of the pilot scale up work that they they've been doing um, in terms of growing up the, uh, the cultured meat. Fantastic. Sounds really interesting. Let's go inside and have a look. Sure, sure. <laughs> George, thanks so much for uh, making the time to have us here at uh, Val. My pleasure. <laughs> Why don't you tell us a little bit about, the, about what you guys actually do? Well, um, so we make uh, cultured meat and cultured meat is a technology where you take the cells that are normally found in meat and grow them up in an environment outside of the animal. So you end up with something which is very, very close in biology but grown inside large stainless steel tanks using electricity so it has a much smaller physical footprint, takes up much less land and a much smaller environmental footprint. We use this technology to engineer entirely new types of food from the ground up that are tastier, more nutritious and more functional than meat from animals. So it's our goal that in the future you'll purchase meat based on brands and you'll have familiarity with the experience of eating those brands and why you choose them, not based on the animals that they come from. Well, we have already built up the world's largest cell library. We have more than 15 different species and more than 400 cell lines um, in-house and uh, our goal is to continue to expand that and characterize all of these different species and cell lines as, uh, across that cell library based on what they bring to different foods. It's very interesting. Now with the process I'm sure a lot of our, our viewers and a lot of our members haven't really paid a lot of attention to the, to the culture of meat space. Can you run them through the process of how you how that actually works? Absolutely. So we start off with a biopsy from an animal, uh, which is a piece of muscle tissue, usually about the size of an almond. We take that, we then have a series of steps that we've developed ourselves that allow us to separate out different cells and then effectively search through tens of thousands or millions of cells to find those that have the ability to grow fast and for a long time. We can then store those as long as we want. And when we're ready to produce them, we take out a little vial of cells from the freezer uh, and uh, thaw it and place them into some nutritional media. That nutritional media has everything those cells need to grow. Sugars, salts, amino acids, and molecules that tell those cells it's time to grow into lots more of themselves. We place those in large bits of equipment known as uh, bioreactors or cultivators, where those cells multiply and multiply and multiply. We're then able to harvest those cells out of the cultivator and turn those into the finished food products that will land on your plate. We're here today thanks to Merck, our, our member. Can you run us through a bit of, of the process working yeah. with them and what they've been involved in? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Merck have been a supplier for us um, since relatively early on. Uh, when we were uh, three people working out of a shoe cupboard lab, uh, which was borrowed off a friend for free in the evenings and weekends, uh, Merck was one of the very first suppliers that we've worked with. We've increased our scale pretty dramatically, as you can see from the fact we're in our own building now uh, with a team of 50 people. Uh, and so we buy a lot of the individual components of that growth media from Merck, as well as a range of other suppliers. Uh, we buy plenty of bits of equipment from them as well, uh, but they've been a consistent supplier both at the lab scale and now some parts of the larger scale manufacturing we're likely to continue to work with them, uh, at least in the first generation products. Fantastic. So George, um, how is science helping to address the challenges of a growing um, world population? Great question. The, the way we grow our food, while it has become much more sophisticated, the paradigm of growing green plants in the ground or rearing animals and slaughtering them for meat has really not changed that much over the last 10,000 years. What we've seen over the last decade or so are several companies that are employing biology directly as a way of making molecules that would otherwise require intensive animal agriculture uh, or large-scale farming. That's, that's pretty awesome. I mean, there's amazing food innovations taking place and I guess it's all really also helping to reduce that environmental footprint um, out there which, you know, Merck, we're, we're very passionate about sustainability and so I think the work that Val is doing in the cultured meat space really aligns well to our, um, you know, drive to really, you know, have um, that reduced, you know, environmental footprint as well. So um, you guys are doing a great job. Thank you and thank you for all the support. <laughs>